Right, there might be some noise in the background, but the lighting's good here, so I'm going to do a bit of a, a sort of a, a chat about um, enclosures for arboreals. Um, I'm also going to do a bit of a shout out to KC Tarantulas. He's um, got some really good videos, and um, one I saw recently was I really liked because it was talking. He was talking about avicularias and sads, which is um, you know when they die for no apparent reason and um there's been a lot of chat about it and basically check out his video and i you know i find i find it hard to find fault in anything he says actually and all his enclosures are good and i pretty much do what he's been doing and um out of the five avicularias i've got i've lost two as slings and i don't know really know what i was doing wrong and i've always um well, perhaps I wasn't using enough course ventilation. Now, this brings me on to my largest avicularia, and I've got some really good news. Um, she's molted okay, and I've got another female, uh, two, um, I think they're the Goliath pink toes, the avicularia variegatas, and I've also just got a female uh, Carabena versicolor. So, I lost two slings, but I've ended up with three females, so... Yeah, I've got to be pretty happy about that. Um, now, this is the enclosure I'm thinking of rehousing my Vicularia variegata into. Now, uh, it's 20 inches tall and 10 inches high, and this is probably the finished article. And um, I've just put a bit of wood in there, and then the water dish stuck up, stuck up high as well. Now, at the moment, I've been using a thermometer here, to measure the temperature, so 23.8 is pretty much what I've got the teas at at the moment, around 23, 23, 24, and you can see it's 76% humidity in there, and I'm not too keen on this, um, and I've realised my first ever acrylic enclosure, and I put side ventilation on, but I don't think there's, the holes are big enough, and also you can see here I've bodged a couple of lines at the top with my um, solder iron, which doesn't look great, but you know, it's the first attempt at acrylic, which um, I think is pretty good. Um, so it's basically work in progress. But I thought I'd show you this um, enclosure and just think, just get your opinion, people on watch, who watch the channel. Um, do you think 76 humidity is too much? Um, I can open the door sort of every day or two days to sort of let a bit of the air out because... Um, I do believe that avicularias need good cross ventilation. Don't necessarily need misting. I've n I've never misted mine. I just I've always had a water dish in there, and ideally water dish at the top. Now I'm going to do a full probably tutorial on avicularias, but I wanted to hold off on that until I kept some and grown um, some into adults before you know releasing a video. So I kind of eliminate any possibility of any error. I don't want to give you guys info. And then something for it to go wrong. So, but I, I think I'm pretty good. I mean, obviously the three have grown big, and I can't wait to show you them. Um, one's still very small. But uh, on the right here is a bit of a blue Peter. I was going to make a moss log. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. I had to film this because I put a bit of effort into it, and I was going to do a bromeliad um, in the centre of it to write to raise it up basically, and it was going to hopefully form a platform where. My variegata, variegata, funnily enough, the bromeliad, one of them's called variegata as well. Coincidence. But, um, yeah, so she was going to web up into the bromeliad. And you keep a bit of water, actually, in the plant. So, in a sense, I'm probably glad I'm not using the plant, because that would have raised up the humidity even more, which, obviously, I've, I've said I'm a bit worried about. But um, I've never seen it done before, anyone actually using a bromeliad to in an enclosure to then have the tarantula in it which is what they do in the wild that was my theory anyway um but sadly obviously i have to build a wider enclosure so um watch the channel and i'm going to be building perhaps another large um enclosure because obviously i've got two avicularias i might sell one so um um well let's see how it goes on that one because she's still small anyway so yeah a bit of blue peter you know it's a program we've got here in the uk uh, you know, you bodge things together, you know, paper mache, and so yeah, a bit of an effort there, but um, obviously, it's not quite gone to plan. But we'll see. I'm gonna, 
I'll show you her feeding in shortly and uh, perhaps I'll wait for a few opinions and if you guys say well you think 75% humidity is okay then you know I'm going to do a bit more research but um, I mean I could always put her in there and see how it goes but uh, I'll do a quick um, tarantula tour but yeah so uh, Casey Tarantula has got very good info there and his setups look uh, very good as you can see I've got a couple of arboreal setups for my Carabena Versicolor now this is more of a juvenile size when they're very small I would put them in something um, around that size or I mean that's actually not a bad size there because because the bigger size I don't think I've got one of them here actually uh, yeah the, most of the size you get is around this size which is what the spider shop in the UK sell um, and I think they're too big for slings so what I've I found is some uh, minestrone soup well, it doesn't have to be minestrone but it's soup containers and they work quite well and I put a lot of side ventilation cross ventilation and then holes in the top so don't be afraid to do a bit of cross ventilation I think the less you get stagnant air the be better and a little water dish at the top but you have to keep an eye on it because it will run out of water quite quick every two or three days. So yeah, so here's my carabena. You can probably still see the old malt in there. Um, there's the Versi, who's still very, very small. I'm going to show you the, the her sister. Um, I think my Heteroscotia maculata here is a male, so I'm going to try and sell him. Uh, he's recently malted. At the back there I've got my P. Irminia who's moving about. She's due a feed soon. Um got another H Mac here who's looking like a female, but I'm not sure. Hopefully you'll molt soon. And there is my freshly malted Avicularia Variegata, who's Oh, she's put on a fair bit of size actually. Yeah, but I mean, she's, she might be alright to stay in there, I reckon, for another malt until I sort of decide on how to house her. I mean, they can grow to 8 inches, so something around sort of 16 inch tall or 12, 13 inch wide is is ideal. So, um, but yes, yeah, I'll show you her feed um, in about 4 or 5 days. And... Uh, that's my Lampropelma who's doing okay. I think it's going to molt soon. The Balfouris are looking fat. Um, I wonder if you can just see... Sorry about the quality of the video. It's looking a bit... Not quite going into focus. But they're, they're webbing like crazy. Uh, this is... Uh, my... I don't know if you can make out the leg. That's my... Um, King Baboon, who, are, who's, who might have molted, I need to check on that. Sturmy, so more exciting news, my Sturmy has molted, due a feed in a couple of days. I've just done a feeding vid um, of my Hispaniola, who's just finishing off a worm there. Now, down to the big big boys, big girls. Um, yeah, this is my Pecams, the new enclosure, it's doing well. Saw her out last night having a drink, so I'm not sure if she's molted. She might have. I need to check that. Um, another one that I'm not sure is molted. It's been four weeks or so, so they, I couldn't see any uh, molt in there. So I did have a peek, but um, don't want to disturb them too much. Uh, this little bloater is going to molt. Um, I'd probably give it another, perhaps three weeks. I've got um, Orphanaceous that's coming out a bit more, and um, that's in pre-malt. Uh, and uh, my Lugardi is growing very slowly. Very hard to get on film for me at the moment. This one's, I rarely see it. The Pissy's doing well. Uh, Tigrana Weseli should malt soon. The little G Polka Place sings down there uh, in pre-malt again. And the Marxie, I think, is pre-malt. Um, and then over here on my bed, I need to get some more shelves installed. My OBT gave me a bit of a scare yesterday because um, I went to check on it and discovered it on its back and thought, oh god, that looks horrible. But it's okay, it molted and I've checked on it this morning and it's fine. Uh, in there's uh, another P. Erminia who's grown rather large. That's also in pre-malt. 
Um, how many times can I say Primo in a video? My Lagunas is just not playing ball when it comes to feeding on camera, but I'll, I'll try and feed her uh, this weekend. At the back here, I've rehoused Eustace, who is currently, I think, you probably won't see much, and I'm sorry if this is a bit hazy, but um, let's see if I can give him a little hello and a good morning. I wonder if he's eaten his um, cricket, because I did leave a cricket in there for him. And... Where is he? I think... Oh, he's in there. So yeah, there's um, my very large male. He's mostly leg at the moment. His legs... I think he's preferring it in there, because th he was in one of those other enclosures. So, um, I wonder if he's eaten his cricket. I believe he's eaten the cricket. So he's got a nice new house in there. And uh, hopefully find him a home soon. And, uh, yeah, so that's it, pretty much. A bit of a tarantula tour on a waffle. Uh, that's my Brachypelmora Fonofelma. I'm not sure who, what she is. I think it's a female. But um, it's a bit annoying, that, because obviously I'd like to breed uh, him or her. Um, so, yeah, a bit frustrating. that. Um, but, for, you know, I can't really blame anyone, because obviously I don't know. They may, maybe they were thought it was an annex. So it's a bit, it's one of those. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the bit of a tour, and yeah, so a lot of malts recently, and uh, yeah, so let me know what you think about the Avicularia variegata, and whether you think 75% humidity is okay, um, and I'll show you um, the more eat very soon. Okay, thanks for watching, and have a lovely weekend.